Okay, so in order to make this into an actual tiling texture, we need to do a couple more things. All right, and I want to show you how I go about making these types of patterns tile so I can then render it out to a texture and work with it in, you know, comps or in ROPs and stuff like that. All right, let's get going. All right, so we are almost there. What I want to do now is I want to center this guy up in the world. So I'm going to drop down a transform node. And a good way to center this up really quickly is just to use the centroid values. So where's the centroid of this particular object? All right, and that's stored in these global variables called CEX and CEY. So if I do $CEY and $CEZ, that's the center of this particular object's bounding box in the X, Y, and Z directions. But you'll notice that it actually offset in the wrong direction. I just need to negate all these guys. All right, so we just need to put a negative symbol in front of all that. And voila, look at that, we're nicely centered up. Very cool. Okay, so what I want to do now is I need to get or extract just this center piece. All right, I don't need all this other stuff. Okay, let's go and create a clip node to do this. All right, and I'm going to demonstrate this. So if I drop down a grid here, all right, let's just put this on a template and then let's put this grid on the XY plane. And we're going to just make it a unit grid size. All right, and get rid of all the rows and columns. So now if I hit three on the keyboard, you can see this is the area that I want right here. All right, if we cut out just that particular piece, we will be able to tile this into a texture. So when we, when we render it out, it'll tile perfectly seamlessly. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to keep the grid there just for reference, but all the values, because we're working in a unit grid, are really easy. So the distances that we use are going to be 0.5. So in this case, I want to move down in Y because currently my clip node is set in the Y direction right here. I want to move this down to negative 0.5. So there's the bottom of our grid right there. Very cool. And then I'm going to duplicate this and we're going to put this up to the positive 0 0.5, but we're going to keep all the primitives below the plane. Look at that. We are now getting a perfect tiling texture. So let's do the X directions now. So in our clip node, we need to actually change this to a one in X and a zero in Y. So we clip off that side. And then I'm going to make another clip node and make this negative 0 0.5 and keep all the primitives above. And look at that. That is a perfectly tiling chain link fence object. And I can prove that by coming down here and creating a couple more copy and transform nodes. Let's actually just get rid of that guy. All right. So now if I tile this two times in X, I get a perfectly tiling texture or mesh in this case. <laughs> and you could totally use the, uh, the mesh instead of rendering this out to a texture. All right, so let's move that up one in Y there. Look at that, how cool is that? All right, so a couple more things I wanna do before I close out this lecture. I wanna go and make sure that I can render this out also inside of a unit grid, okay? And so to do that, we need to basically fit our pattern that we have going here into a unit box or a unit grid, okay? So. Uh, what, let's go and do that. I'm going to go and drop down a match size node. This is very handy to accomplish this task. All right. What it does is it allows us to match the size of one object to another. And in this case, I want to use a unit box. So by default, the box is a unit box. The value has a size of one in all axes. All right. So I'm going to feed that in for this second input. All right. And I'm going to take our pattern and feed it into the first input. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say scale to fit. All right. And we want to do a uniform scale. And look at that. We now fit perfectly within our unit box. And, you know, we can always bring the, the size and Z down to like 0.25 just to make it look a little more official. Doesn't really have any effect on it. All right. So now what I want to do, let's say I want to have more than, you know, this amount of chain links in my texture. Well, we can control that from these two guys. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to take this total number right here. I'm going to copy that parameter and put it into this second copy and transform node. So now when I go and move this, the match size is always going to keep our pattern in a unit box. Look at that. Very cool. And it tiles perfectly. Okay. 
So with that, we are now ready to turn this into an actual texture. Okay, so in the next lecture, we're going to go through setting up our camera and rendering this out in Mantra.